Welcome to Chapter 3, and what Chapter 3 is going to discuss are terms involving the body as a whole. There is an additional animation this week. Be sure to watch it probably multiple times. And again, lots of practice, practice, practice with your exercises in the chapter text and on Prep U prior to taking your weekly exam. So this chapter's course objectives are to describe the key body structures, its regions and cavities, to define terms related to body structures and regions, directions and positions, and colors in medical terminology, to spell and pronounce medical terms built with common word parts related to the body as a whole, to describe the common types of medical records used in healthcare settings, and to explain what a body system is and why it's useful to learn medical terminology by body systems. And really throughout the rest of the text, we're going to be separating medical terminology you will see into different body systems. So let's first talk about body structures and health and disease. So the chapter begins with combining forms related to body structures in health and disease. So these terms are aden, with its combining form adeno for gland, blast or blasto for immature cell, cyto for cell, epithelio for epithelium, which is a type of tissue, fibro for fiber, Hemo or hemato for blood, histo for tissue, hydro for water or fluid, leo for smooth, lipo for fat, morpho for form or shape, myo or myoso for muscle, necro for death, neuro for nerve, nucleo for nucleus. Osteo for bone, patho for disease, sarco for flesh, trofo for nourishment, viscero for internal organs, site for cell, oma for tumor, osis for abnormal condition, pathy for disease. Additional suffixes continued are plasia for formation, cis for condition or process, stasis for stopped or standing. When we talk about terms are related to body structures and health and disease, we need to understand um, some terminology. So cell is the smallest independent unit of a living structure. A chromosome is a structure in the cell nucleus bearing genes. Cytoplasm is the substance of a cell excluding the nucleus. Gene is the functional unit of heredity occupying a specific place on a chromosome. Nucleus, the central structure in cells containing chromosomes. Additionally, additionally, cytology is the study of cells. Histology is the study of cells and tissues. Homeostasis is a state of equilibrium. Metabolism is the sum of the normal chemical and physical changes occurring in tissue. Body system refers to a group of organs with, relate, uh, with related in structure or function. An organ is a structure of similar tissues or cells with a specific function. Tissue is the aggregation of similar cells performing a specific function. So this all relates to the levels of organization in the body, starting with the cell and inside the cell, the chromosome or nucleus. Increasing um, in complexity is the tissue, um, and then organs are made of tissues, that's the stomach. Body systems are made of multiple organs, and then the body as a whole. 
So terms related to conditions and disease are um, a term acute, uh, referring to a disease of sudden onset and a brief course, chronic, referring to a persistent disease or illness, etiology is the study of cause of disease, exacerbation, an increase in the severity of a disease or symptom, idiopathic, related to a disease of the unknown, inflammation, cytologic and chemical changes in tissue in response to an injury or a disease, lesion, a pathologic change in tissue resulting from disease or injury, necrosis, a pathologic death of cells or tissue, now we're going to move on to body areas, cavities, and divisions of the abdomen. So some of the confining forms that you need to become familiar with are abdomino for the abdomen, acro for extremity or tip, brachio for the arm, cervico for the neck, lumbo for the lumbar region or lower back, pedo or podo for foot, Pelvi for pelvis, thoraco for thora the thorax or the chest. So we need to understand that medical terms help define, again, specific areas of the body, precise locations, cavities within the body, and clinical divisions of the abdomen. So when we're referring to divisions of the abdomen um, or body areas or cavities, the abdomen is the section of the trunk between the pelvis and the chest. The cranium is the skull and the diaphragm is a muscle between the abdominal and thoracic cavities. Um, extremity refers to limb. Pelvic region is the area of the pelvis below the abdomen. The thorax is the chest or the upper part of the trunk. Some body cavities, we're referring to the cranial cavity. It's the hollow area within the skull occupied by the brain. The thoracic cavity is the hollow area within the chest occupied by the lungs, heart, and other organs. The abdominal cavity is the hollow area within the abdomen occupied by the digestive and the other organs. And real important to watch that video this week because you're going to get some vis more visual re um, representation of these areas. Spinal cavity, that's the hollow area within the spine occupied by the spinal cord. The pelvic cavity is the hollow area within the pelvis occupied by certain reproductive, urinary, and digestive organs. So here is an, a visual re, um, a diagram of the body cavities. So there's the cranial cavity, the spinal cavity, the thoracic cavity, the diaphragm separating the thoracic cavity from the abdominal cavity, and then the pelvic cavity, and sometimes we referred to the abdomino-pelvic cavity there. When we talk about divisions of the abdomen, uh, the abdomino-pelvic regions include the umbilical region, which is the central abdominal region, the epigastric region, which refers to the abdominal region above the umbilical region, the hypogastric region, which refers to the abdominal region below the umbilical region, also called the suprapubic region. Abdominal pelvic regions continue to include the lumbar region, left and right, the abdominal regions to the left and the right of the umbilical region, the iliac region, the left and right, the abdominal regions to the left and right of the hypogastric region, and the hypochondriac region, left and right, which is the abdominal regions to the left and right of the epigastric region. So visualize the divisions of the ab abdom abdominopelvic region here and make sure that you understand where they are and you're able to identify and label those. 
divisions of the abdomen of the abdomen or the abdominal pelvic quadrants. You'll often see this in a medical record with the abbreviation. So very important to know. You're going to see this a lot. So the left lower quadrant is the LLQ. Um, the left upper quadrant is the LUQ. The right lower quadrant is the RLQ and the right upper quadrant is the RUQ. And see that these are uppercase. So remember that abbreviations are very specific to upper and lower case. So here you can visually see that um, and be able to label a diagram like that potentially for a test question and visualize that um, when you're talking about it and writing that in a medical record. When we talk about combining forms as far as uh, body directions, positions, and planes, spend a lot of time studying this and watching the video this week. Um, so combining forms, entero for the front, caudo for the tail, cephalo for the head, dorso for the back, and ferro for below, lateral for the side, medio for the middle, uh, middle uh, postero for the back, Proximo for a near point of region, supero for above, ventro for belly. Circum for around, epi on and following, enter between, intra within. Peri for around or surrounding, retro for backward or behind, sub or infra for below and beneath, supra for above. Directional terms include cephalid for toward the head, caudid towards the tail, superior for above and upward, inferior for below and down or downward. Anterior for toward the front of the body, posterior toward the back of the body, ventral pertaining to the belly or front, dorsal pertaining to the back, lateral pertaining to the side, medial pertaining to the middle, unilateral pertaining to one side only, bilateral pertaining to both sides. Proximal, near the trunk or point of origin, distal, away from the trunk or point of origin, superficial, near the surface, deep, far from the surface, Antero posterior from the back to the front, excuse me, from front to back, antero posterior. So directional terms, watch the video, get real familiar with this because this can get confusing. You want to be very familiar with these terms. Pos positional terms, um, are the anatomic position is the body in standard reference position, standing erect, arms at the side, palms facing forward. The decubitus is lying down when referred to position, uh, positional terms. Dorsal recumbent, lying on the back, the legs bent and the feet flat. Um, Fowler position or the semi-recumbent position, lying on back with the head of bed raised 45 degrees. Lateral recumbent lying on the side, prone lying face down, supine lying face up. When you refer to a plane, that's an imaginary surface that extends through two definite points. So the coronal plane, the frontal plane is the vertical plane dividing the body into anterior and posterior halves. Sagittal plane, vertical plane dividing the body into the left and right halves and the transverse plane, which is the horizontal plane dividing the body, in, body into upper and lower halves. So be sure to watch the video to really visualize the planes and practice labeling the body planes.